antibody production. And we have seen what are the, what is the antigen and how they interact with the cells and how that produces antibody. Those interactions and antigen and antibody interaction, how they bonds in the body. So we need to, uh, you know, follow up that, what is the application of this knowledge which you have done. So there are two parts, is the applied immunology and clinical immunology. Clinical immunology is the one, is the applied aspect of what you've learned. Using as an antigen and antibody as a technology. Either you can prevent a disease or a diagnose a disease. So that is the application mainly. Okay. And the next part is the antibody, as I mentioned, that's a whole range of marketing tool, technology, monoclonal antibody. And they have a billion dollar business going on. So as a biology graduate, if you want to start your own business or if you want to go on, on, a, on an industrial or biotechnology industry, consider this as a monoclonal antibody business. That's very important. There is a lot of uh, money involved and business as well as job opportunities are there plenty in that field. So that's why I chose this immunology. Though it is a, it's an advanced level to your graduate program, but I want to put it very simple. So when you go and graduate out from UHV, and then if you say if you know the immunology, that will help to get a job, number one. If you go for a PA school, they will also, the required course is this, and pharmacy school or medical school. I mean, medical school is not a required one, but it's a knowledge, that's it. But rest of the uh, school, like a PA school, it is a must. You have to have immunology as well, nutrition. So it's a whole range of, uh, you know, applications in this, okay. So our primary goal is to use the, the knowledge which we have already received by basic immunology. Now we are going on to the, the next level of applied. So the first and foremost is the vaccination, which you have done. So we are going to see in this class about uh, what is vaccination, what is strategy behind the vaccination, and what are the vaccination which you as a mother record for the neonatal, and then how these um, the passive new immunity or active, active immunity they, they have been performed in our, or it has been done in our own immune system. So it will help to prevent any disease. Um, as a global level, uh, if you go apply into, into a bioterrorism attack, we have to protect ourselves in a way that we need to have our more immunity. So we will see in this class about all these details. So what I'm going to show you, this is a, one, the vaccination prophylaxis, how to control the infection. And the example is the rabies. That's on the, uh, as well as the cytokosis, okay. And these two diseases are stopped by importing the dogs and parrots from the other uh, countries. So that's what the UK, they thought, this is the history of how the, this is being done. And also they improve the water supply and sewage system and personal hygiene and cholera prevention, all put together, you know, to form this chapter, how we are going to prevent this disease, okay. Also we have seen uh, the passively acquired immunity, that's all the temporary protection. And then temporary protection means preformed antibody from another individual. You need not raise your own antibody, but instead of your own antibody, you are getting the antibody from somebody else, correct? Suppose in one of the example is the, the acquired antibody, um, the, you know, the, from from the mother to the to the to the infant. Uh, to the fetus, so how that's being transferred. So the, already the antibody has been produced in mother and that has been transferred, which we have seen some other things. And, and this is a, a disadvantage because the antibody level, once you, you have, uh, uh, you know, transfer, suppose, you know, 500 uh, antibodies, but you see, as soon as the antigen comes, 200 has been used, only 200 is left over, another uh, type of attack, 200 or 300 has been used. So, so immediately, you know, after exhaust of antibody, because you are borrowing the antibody, you are getting the antibody injection from some other resources. So that is not going, it's a temporary inhibition, that's all. For a permanent resolution, you have to constantly, simultaneously, or instantaneously produce your own antibody whenever it requires. So that will give lifelong effect or it will have long-term effect, okay? So that's the, another part that we have uh, seen. So the example we have seen already, the horse, 
uh, globulins and then anti-tetanus or anti-diphtheria toxin, which we have, we have taken from the horse. The antibody from horse we can inject to our, our system. But sometimes, you know, it will give a, um, a serum sickness because you are taking a one species of horse and then you are transferring to the human. So that might, sometimes it, it, it gives in a serum sickness where it will, uh, it will give a, a, a wrong, uh, you know, or undesired effect for the serum sickness. And the maternally occurred antibody, fetus protected by mothers, that the lymphocyte system is not in a development for the infant, so are the fetus, so the, this one is the IgG that protects, that fetus protected by mothers, IgG, so it is not like the infant I, IgG or the, or the fetus is not developed, so IgG should come from the mother. So that's the, one of the best example from the human to human. Okay, the another one which we have seen as a neonate, as a newborn, they have got IgA, as I mentioned before, they have, the immune, immune system is not yet developed. So the mother's immune system, that secretes of IgA. The IgA, which we know about, that, that going to be uh, present uh, normally onto the mucosal surface of the in, in intestine, right? So in the mother's uh, gut, that gives more of bacterial and, and other, uh, you know, good as well as the bad bacteria, and that will provoke certain type of reactions that will secrete more of IgA antibody in the mother, and that is now it's going through, you know, colonizing that this one is the surface IgA directed mother's gut and that the bacteria will, that will activate the mother's IgA or, and, and this is going to migrate to the breast and the colonize near the milk secreting cells. And thereby IgA is being transferred to the infant and through the cholesterol and the immunoglobulin, they call it. And that will form in the infant's intestine, it will be there in the infant or neonate intestine, the IgA, it is not absorbed, but whenever there is an infection, the baby gets something like sick, always the baby they used to chew or something like they get it. So it always tastes something. So it enter into the gut and probably the IgA, that will be the protection. So now we will go on to the next level. I mean, how we are going to, you know, to, to produce this IgA in a larger quantity. So that strategy we are going to see in, in our class now. And meanwhile, we also studied about the pooled human globulin, patients with a long-standing immunodeficiency, okay, and they prove to be adult a gamma globulin. I mean, this is, this is something like a chicken box, measles and hepatitis infections. They, they all, you know, they, they all require of the human globulin or the antibody. But if you provide your own vaccination or uh, uh, of anti antibody production, then we can prevent that. We will see that strategy now. So human uh, immunoglobulin is better than the horse anti, um, and, and antibody or anti-tetanus or whatever the things which arise from these other species. So human to human, are the chicken bar, uh, pox or hepatitis or uh, gamma globulin, I mean, all those, you know, which you require as a human means it is good. One of the example is thrombocytopenic purpura, which we have seen about this uh, autoimmune disease. Right, and, and for this, we need to inject the IM, that is intramuscular injection. Also, the monoclonal antibody is also available with the vaccine virus and herpes and tetanus and rubella and swine flu, as well as we, in, this is being on, under the development now. And we want to study in a little bit, in a detail of the culture antibodies that's made to order. So that's the part which we stopped last class about it. That's the recombinant DNA technology and, and that's what just we want to see now. What is recombinant DNA technology? Have you, have you studied before of the recombinant DNA? Uh, just in a nutshell, I will put it like this in a bacteria. Enjoy a bacterial, okay? This is a cell, bacterial cell. And inside the bacterial cell, there is no nucleus, you know about it. And you have only the naked, what? Chromosomes or bacterial chromosome, or you can say as a DNA, bacterial DNA, okay? And if this bacteria can divide, how long this bacteria will divide? One cell divided into two cells, into it will have 15 to 20 minutes. It, it will give a, you, have you done in your, in your cell biology or biochemistry class a logarithmic scale of, of the cell growth, right? So that's a short period of time, you know, human 
30 to 40 minutes, you know, it, it will divide in a, in, a, in a very good fashion. If you see the different time course of the cell division, you will find 30 minutes, right? It, it will go on a maximum of the lac to lac phase, you will find out. So you will get a doubling time. It's, it's a quicker than that. So that's why whenever you, you, you cook something and then give it for a long time, then that is going to be bad because of the bacterial contaminations. So have you ever heard of the more, most of the kings and queens and, and there, they are to always the kitchen is boiling, boiling with all the food. After 30 minutes, they won't eat. They throw them out and then they get the new fresh. Within 30 minutes, it should be served. So that's in the olden days. That's the, you know, without this knowledge of bacterial contamination, they themselves, they, they observe it is not good. But now, scientifically speaking, this division time is there. So my point is the bacteria, we can produce more in short period of time, okay? So if you, if you put any, any human uh, DNA here, DNA from human, it can also divide the same rate, right, in a bacteria. So in this technology, we can do it. Also, we can use in a, in a cancer cell. Suppose if the cancer cells in the nucleus, the cancer cell, and also yeah, they, are, they call it as a desired uh, DNA, which is putting over there, and they put a hybrid, hybrid, and they call it as a hybridoma. Hybridoma, and the hybridoma will produce a, a desire of, um, of monoclonal antibodies. So this is another part where you can use the DNA, recombinant DNA technology to produce more of this antibody. Okay, that's the one part. Then let's see on to the next one, what we have left on the last class about this uh, DNA technology. One of the challenging part is, is the phage libraries. You know the bacterial phage libraries? So you know about this bacteria, okay? This bacteria can be infected by we can call it as a, another thing as a bacteriophage. So, so bacteria can infect human and destroy. I mean, if you were the toxin and everything, right? This is bacteria. But the bacterial phage can infect this and kill the bacteria. So in other words, the back phage also has a, its own, um, you know, chromosomes, uh, I mean, uh, a DNA, I put it there, not chromosome, it's a DNA, also a DNA here, and bacteria also have a DNA. So when this bacterial phage infect this, what, what will happen, it will go just like a, a virus. We have seen the virus is not a, as an organism directly, but it is a particle. It needs a, a, a cell or viable cells. So the bacteria can, um, can be infected by this virus, and virus, these are bacterial DNA, and this phage DNA can also you know, ligate with this, and then it can um, grow more with the bacteria, and more number of bacteria phage will kill this bacteria and it releases. So by the way, what you, you get in this, if you have this bacteria, uh, a piece of DNA from human, a DNA, which is the desired one. We can, we can say the antibody producing a gene and you put it over there in bacteria, it will grow, multiply. But if using the phage, this can be uh, biologically degraded and then you will have uh, different pieces of this human as well as the bacteria, chromosome, uh, bacterial DNA is going to be linked to the, the progeny or the multiplication or the a reproduction of the bacteriophage inside the bacteria. So you get the large bacterial DNA molecule, which including the human DNA, which is split into pieces. So when you look this pieces put together and you can make a library, that is the phage library. So you can say, for example, um, 15,000 nucleotide to 150,000 nucleotide, 100 times more. If this nucleotide is being incorporated into bacteria, bacterial DNA, so this is human DNA, DM human DNA, which is the desired sequence of an antibody producing gene. If you put it over there, if you see this, you get the bacteria 
DNA and the human DNA is going to be a large DNA molecule put together. So when you split, sometimes, you know, this will have here and sometimes it is going to be, it is not in one, one entity. So some of the, this is the human one and this is the bacterial DNA. See the DNA. So here you have a human DNA and human DNA and somewhere it's a human DNA. So when the phage is going to cleave here, 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 and then here. So each part of this piece, which is going to one phage, this is another phage, this is another phage, another phage, another phage, another phage. So you get a different phage DNA molecule will have both our individual uh, DNA, what we require on that part. Do you follow this part about how the phage library is being constructed initially? And that phage library will have different kind of uh, the antibody. That's the application part as the recombinant, uh, recombinant, recombinant DNA technology. That's the technology. So you can keep this library. It is available, widely available. This phage library available. From this library, we can we can choose. We can choose the antibody or whatever you know what the desired one so that's the part so we can construct choose and construct antibody or the antibody means you know in, if you see the antibody molecule you have a two part right here this one part where the variable region you know where exactly the antibody molecule is binding to the antigen so that region fragment a b and also fragment V, that's a variable region, okay? And also the, the other part, the heavy chain and light chain, a fragment where you can also the heavy chain, okay? VH, which also we have seen. And then a variable region of the light chain. VH is a heavy chain variable region, and VL is a light chain variable region. All we can, we can get this region of uh, the protein of the antibody and corresponding protein can also lead to the DNA pieces. And that DNA pieces can be constructed from phage DNA or recombinant DNA technology. So we can keep this one stuck. Whenever we want to construct, we can get from this and then we can produce more, put this phage DNA piece into a bacteria and then we can produce more of that particular DNA and then subsequently into the protein. So from this, what people they have already done for, you know, from the plant resources. So antibody can be produced from the plant, a banana. They can produce some antibody or you can do some insulin molecule. That's another type of protein, not an immunology important, but other protein is a, so a different type of, uh, of uh, application. So that is also been useful in the DNA, recombinant DNA technology, okay? So now we'll go on to the, the, the next one is if they produce more, one example is they, from the plant, they also produce IgA, more of IgA. And then using this IgA used on the baby formula food. Okay. So this will help to prevent some of the pathogens getting into the baby's uh, intestine, right, or the gastrointestinal system. And another type of, um, in the DNA technology, or uh, recombinant DNA technology, is the innate immune system. Innate immune system. Okay, the innate immune system, they call it as we have seen before, defensin molecule. Defensin. The defensin molecule, and they are antibacterial antibacterial molecules, okay? They are also antibacterial peptides. If they say peptides, it's a protein, they also have a gene. So they can also incorporate this gene, as I mentioned before, in a phage or a bacteria, 
Uh, you can also do it in a plant and produce more of the difference in molecule. And um, the quick uh, uh, and, and very important uh, way to produce more, they use it as a tobacco plant. So usefulness of this tobacco, not into the cigar, but now they want to produce more of the difference in molecule, okay? And they also produce some of the fungal, okay? And bacterial, bacterial infection. What they do for these bac fungal bacterial infections, they use this tobacco plant produced difference in molecule. The difference in is the one as in a polymorphonuclear cells. You know, it is a polymorphonuclear cells. If you see the cell, polymorphonuclear cells. You have the granule. This is the nucleus. Polymorpho. This is the morphology is not a round one. So it is a different shape. So it is, that's why it's a polymorphonuclear cell. And um, this has a granules, which is there. They are something like a hand grenade, right? And they have these peptides. They have the difference in molecule, difference in. So whenever the PMN cells engulf a bacteria is getting in, in a, in a bacteria getting in, so this will attack, it will get in and it is going to be attacked, these peptidase, these are as a, as a peptides and, and, and these molecules will attack the bacteria and kill them out. So this is a, it also it, it also present in the macrophage. Okay. Okay. Now we'll go on to the next part of the vaccination. Vaccination primarily the vaccination part. Vaccination by by herd immunity herds. You know the cow, right? Immunity what the cowpox like. But the, the, um, the mechanism will go behind as a tetanus. Tetanus, a disease, you know tetanus? The by active immunization, active immunization. What is active immunization? Anyone? Active. Tetanus. Tetan if you inject a tetanus. A live virus. Live virus, yeah, ex exactly. If you inject a tetanus directly, that's active. And that, that produces more of immunity to that person who is resuming it. Okay, that's produced, that's our active. The one which we also, we have seen on the passive, we will see that one, that's a dead, uh, it is not many inactive, it's not a virulent one, but they also produce an antibody that's on the passive one. They also transfer the antibody itself has been transferred from mother to, to the infant or the baby. So that's all kind of the passive. But it's an active means as soon as it receives the antigen or the pathogen getting into the system, that will produce more of antibody. We call it as an active immunization. Okay. So the, yes. The cowpox is it live or? Uh, that in historically speaking, at the time of uh, of, of of that um, you know. Um, the experimentation by the posture, right? And then he put the live one put to that boy. So that's the type which they, that's active immunization. But later on, they modified that one into the passive or the attenuated in an inactive form. But yeah, as soon as it's getting involved, because as a chemical itself is an inert molecule, right? So instead of putting a, a live organism to a person, you can provoke the immunity to or to, to educate your immune system using the molecule, the chemical, which will provoke that immunity. So they dissected out. There is no life involved. There is no uh, you know involvement of uh, a live or, or virulent organisms. You know pathogen directly activated instead of that, the pathogens coat the pathogen. Uh, you know instead of live, you know the dead organisms are, are the membrane protein. That will provoke the immune system. We need only our immune system. We, we have to produce an antibody. Yeah, our immune system doesn't care whether that's alive or dead, but it will produce an antibody as soon as it, see, it, it, it communicates with them. So something like an enemy is there inside, and, and uh, even if, if there is an enemy or not, the enemy is uh, you know, putting a bomb sound or something like an, you know, it's on a virtual world, and he is producing it. Uh, 
but in a, in you are seeing from a fort and then seeing that hey there is some bombs going on but there is no enemy there but is virtually they are producing something like put the noise there so, so somebody is there but there is nobody else there right but you pretend that you are active against it defense against that one the same thing is the molecule are dead molecule uh, i mean the organism is dead but the molecules are persist in the body so that is enough to communicate to our immune system hey there is there is an infection is going on. There is some language. There is an order. There is a, a series of reaction which our immune system can learn from that. So that molecule, we use that molecule of the pathogen or the active virus or bacteria, which is not a bacteria as such, but bacterial membrane molecule. That is the one which we need to induce or boost our immune system. So that part we will see in a bit later. So that's why the active immunization and then it is the benefit to the individual. It is a benefit to the individual. Okay? Because the individual will produce it, but not the community. Why? Because the active immunization, the, immun the person can develop, the individual can develop the antibody. But what will happen, which is present in a, in a soil, this organism, it is not going to help. In water, it is not going to help. To it, it is persists there unless otherwise your own immune system, your own body is protection. You antibody, then only you can you can do it. So the active immunization help only for the individual and not for the community as a whole. So that you should understand the part. Okay. So how we can improve this active immunization or the individual? That's our goal. Okay. So we have to consider certain strategy. Strategy. Okay, to improve, to improve our individual, individual immune system. So that's the very important. Otherwise, we also call it the objective of vaccination. Vaccination, objective of vaccination. We have to provide an effective immunity. Effective, the word is effective, is very important. Effective immunity. Okay. Effective immunity means we have to produce more of antibody in our system, right? And also primed. Antibody. What is primed antibody means you have to you have to make your system should learn and keep it in your memory. So our cells should be taught by this molecule. The cells should learn from this molecule. And the cells will understand, hey, the, if there is a molecule, then I have to provide more of antibody. So the, the process of learning, it will take a quite a bit of time. Instead, you already taught something like a, a new language if you want to study and, and then maybe an alphabet to a word and then conversation. And then finally, you are fluent because you are learning and keep it in your memory what words and what verb, what nouns and everything. The same way, the molecules have been introduced first time to the cells and the cells will learn from this and produce certain type of molecule that is the learning molecule. And keep it as such in a memory. It won't interact unless otherwise there is the same organism which is coming in, then immediately that will provoke more of antibody. Because already the learning process is over. So it keep it in the memory. So those cells, we call it as a memory cells. And, and these cells, memory cells, boost boost the immune system. So our ultimate goal, what is our goal? Strategy to improve individual immunization in the effective way, otherwise the effective immunity. It is possible only we have memory cells. How to get the memory cell? We have to do vaccination. Now, what is vaccination? What type of molecules which we can use it as a vaccination. That's what we will see now. Okay. Depending upon the infection, the areas will, will establish. Depend 
on the infection. What type of infection we get? And then the strategy will work on differently. Polio, okay, infection, in polio infection. So we need high blood antibody. So this is very important. For the polio infection, we need high level of antibody to fight against it. Okay, number two, if you have a TB, you know, tuberculosis, mycobacterium tuberculi infection, okay, tuberculosis. This is infected by mycobacterium infection, mycobacterium tuberculoid, okay? This infection, we need to have high level of macrophage, macrophage, you know, about the, uh, the innate immune system, high level of macrophage activating, activating cell mediated immunity okay cmi cmi cell mediated immunity for the tb what you need we need high level of macrophage activating cell mediated immunity but in polio infection we need more of high level of the, of the antibody against the polio virus now, number three, influenza virus. That's what we want now because we have a more of influenza going on, right? Influenza virus, the strategy, we need more of cytotoxic T cells. Okay? They play a significant role because the viral infection, which will go through a cell, suppose this is a cell uh, in a mammalian cell, so the virus will go in inside them and then it's going to host. So as we discussed earlier, if we have more of cytotoxic T cells and the T cells can go and kill these cells, kill this cell. So if you have more of cytotoxic T cells running around in our blood, as soon as a virus hit in our body or getting into the system, these T cells will take care. You don't need to worry about antibody. We don't need to worry about the CMI macrophage or anything, cytokine T cells will carry on. So depending upon the infection, we have to have a different strategy to our immune system. So TB, yes, we need a cell mediated in, uh, I mean immunity. And for polio, already we should have more of antibody which will compact and then it will reduce our infection going on. But virus, we need to boost up. So now we should know what are the ways which we can improve high blood pressure, high blood, uh, blood uh, antibody, as well as the CMI, as well as cytokine T cells, how we can boost up. There are different ways to do that one, okay? These are the strategies. Now, site of immune response. In another part is the site of immune response. Site of immune response. One example here, cholera. Where the cholera will occur? Cholera, what is the cholera? Is uh, it is uncontrolled diarrhea which is going on, more of water secretion. So it is from the intestine or small intestine, right? Cholera. Okay. This is the antibody needs to be in gut. So if antibodies are present in the blood, that will not going to help for cholera infection. This cholera is going to be affect mostly on the small intestinal tract, on the large intestinal part. So if, this is large intestine, if this antibody are present here in the gut, then it can prevent the cholera. Instead, if it is in the blood, and then it won't help. So we have to find out where the pathogen is going to anchor first, and thereby we have to prevent in that strategy. Okay. So now, can we eradicate the infectious agent? There's another question. Can we eradicate the infectious agents? There are a lot of agents there. Can we eradicate, can we destroy? No infection 
infectious agent, no bacteria, I mean, infectious, no pathogen is available. Can we do that as a human? Can? One side, if you kill one type of virus, and the another side is coming up. It is not going to happen. It is not possible. Answer is not possible. We cannot eradicate the infectious agent. It is there as an evolutionary part and parcel of life. It is there, infectious agent, some say it is there. Normal, good bacteria, all in a sudden it is mutated and giving a bad one. So it is, it is going to be there. But only thing is, we have to protect ourselves. That's the only part that we need to work on that. Okay, another example which we can study is the malarial infection, malarial parasite. The malarial parasite, it lives what? Where it will live, this one, malarial parasite. Malaria. Is a human part, another one is a mosquito. So its life cycle goes here, mosquito to human and human to mosquito. Mosquito to human, human to mosquito. It's going around and around. So you protect one part, and all of a sudden, it will go, this organism is here, right? Malarial parasite, this parasite. So part of the life cycle, it shares from one side to the other. So it constantly changing its antigen. So you need a whole world or a global vaccine for this. It's, it's tough. Now we are in a, in a path, we can prevent the malarial infection, but I mean the, the epidemic, but 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 it's still it's a task going on. So Bill Gates is spending billions of dollars on this one. So on the part of that one, yes, we got some global vaccine for this. And also, the the um, the part of the human part where it produces more of cytokine. This is again malarial parasite. And these cytokines, that is the unpleasant, that is the fever. You know the malarial fever, which will come periodically, you know about the 24 hours or 48 hours or 72 hours. So that is a periodicity. That is the a time where it will induce more of cytokine mediators, prostaglandin, and that will produce more of the fever. That is responsible for that. So we need to find out the type of agent, type of the antigen that will provoke this. So it is impossible. So we need to have a different strategy for that one, okay? So also they also produce more of resistance. Resistance or to the malarial parasites. So it is a challenge. So though we have got more knowledge of this immunology and antibody and vaccine systems and everything, this is still there's a challenge for the malarial parasites. So the CDC is working hard and, and different agencies they're working hard. They're partly they are successful and they are not one hundred percent sure eradicate on the malarial one. Okay. The next part is the other specific needs, other specific needs, okay, that implement the effective immunity. Antigen must be readily available. Now we are going to about vaccination, okay? Antigen readily available. Then we can prevent, readily available. Okay. And the preparation, what is the antigen? The preparation, whatever you're injecting should be stable. Okay. And also should be cheap, not expensive. Okay. Cheap. Also, it should be a safe molecule. It should not provoke any side effects. Okay. This is very important. And then the next part is the recipient or the human. Okay. Recipients should be healthy. You cannot treat or you cannot administer the immunization or vaccine for a sick person. If you go to the doctor and getting an immunization, there are two strategies. You should be healthy. You should not sick. You should not die, feeling in a diarrhea or, or, or nausea or a headache. The doctor won't give an injection to you or, or vaccinate to you. So that is strategy. You have to have a healthy body at the time of vaccination. That's very important. So healthy. Or sick children or any other infection going on, doctor won't give any vaccination or the shot. Okay. Other part is the the first construct with the antigen. The construct, the antigen, okay? Construct of the antigen should 
should not be injurious, should not be injurious. Okay. They should not avoid, avoid pathogenic effect. Pathogenic effect of the infection. See, we are dealing with uh, infectious agents, right? But at the same time, we should remove the pathogenic effect of that particular infectious agent. So, meaning we have to use mostly on the dead organisms. Dead organisms to inject, to provoke our immune system, not on the live one, so that we can avoid this pathogenic effect. So, how to achieve this safety? The next question. How to achieve the safety? Okay. Use what? Killed organisms. Okay. As vaccines. Now we are coming up. What is vaccines? Killed organisms. Why we are using killed organisms? Because the live organisms will be the pathogen. And what are the strategy? Depending upon the type of infection, we have to use in a different strategy to improve or boost our immune system. You cannot have always a shot, 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 shot. No, it is not. Some of the shot, some of them you have to go orally, some of them IV, some of them intramuscular. So different strategy on a different kind of, and how? Depending upon the need to attack the pathogen. Okay. Except there's a one example here is the exception parasite worms and protozoa. So they are the exception. You cannot prepare this as a killed organisms. This is extremely difficult to produce. Extremely difficult. Can we eat a dead worms to prevent our own immune system? How many worms you have to eat or you have to inject into your system? It's not possible. Okay, so avoid that. Extremely difficult to immune for the parasites, which is our protozoa. Protozoa as well as the worm. Okay, in a bulk quantity. You cannot, you cannot grow bulk of worms, bulk of protozoa, and then kill them, and then ask them to eat or, or inject. That is not possible. So that's so as a vaccine. Rule out that possibility. Bacteria, virus. Yes, we can do that one because they will bacteria and virus they can multiply quickly. Bacteria and then virus can be involved to produce in bulk quantity. Bulk and then we can uh, autoclave or we can kill, grow in bulk, grow in bulk, okay, and then kill them and then use as vaccines. Okay. Example of vaccines which is available in the market, typhoid. Anyone suffered typhoid before? Typhoid, para typhoid, no. It's again, it's a type of malaria infection. You have a seasonal. If you get a fever every day, evening, six o'clock only, after that you are perfectly all right. Six o'clock evening, you are getting a sick. You are getting a high fever, getting 105, 104. Then, then uh, the next day morning you woke up, everything fine. You are not taking any medication, you know, anti-fever reducer or nothing. But it is season, it comes again and again on that particular time. That is typhoid. And it's very serious things that we have to kill the person. So it's be avoid that one. So the typhoid, okay, organisms, they also have the para typhoid, organism, para typhoid, typhimurium. Para typhoid A, another type is para typhoid B. Okay. Another one is cholera. Cholera, bacteria, killed poliomyelitis. Killed another virus, okay? Poliomyelitis. Okay. This is the Salk, uh, Salk Institute vaccine. Have you ever heard of this Salk? This is the first time our American presidents and and they were negotiating with that one. And the first time they got a lot of children, 1960s, they did. Have you ever watched some Discovery Channel and vaccines and Salk Institute? There is a one video. It's wonderful. They have, they, have, they have given a large number of 
children and they have injected and, and they have they have taken the picture and the video, a uh, real one, and they, they 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 died because of some of the the three type of polio virus. The two of them they produce antibody, high blood level, and then the, for one it is not provoking. So what 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 happens? That itself vaccine itself killed the children. Otherwise, they are keeping quiet. So that provoked a lot of uh, you know, anxiety in the United States at the time, 1960 to 61. Okay, now we have got a different type of polio vaccines and that is more safe now. Now it is safe. Okay. And um, the measles, next one is the measles. Measles vaccine used by the fusion antigen used as fusion because it, they, they piggyback with something else used as a fusion antigen and also it this also leads to sometimes this measles that leads to cellular virus spread why the measles it should it should be immunocompromised individual meaning this measles if it is a healthy individual okay healthy okay they are unhealthy and they have a malnutrition malnutrition they are not healthy but they are malnutrient for them this measles this vaccine is not good no good because you have to you get after after a while the cellular virus can spread for this for these people. So you need to have a healthy and mal without any malnutrition, the missiles will work on that one. Okay. So to remedy for this, suppose if an individual unknowingly the doctor injected these or uh, uh, the vaccinated these measles injection to them, then in that case they have to potentiate. You know, you have to add immunopotentiative drug, potentiate drug. Or you can also induce thymus hormones. Thymus, because thymus is the one where the T cells will be produced. So thymus hormone should be administered. During at the time of vaccination, you have to give this drug therapy, and thereby we can make this malnourished or malnutrient people to, to boost their immune system. Okay. The next one, if you go on to the textbook in figure 14. 18 there are different strategies for vaccinations okay if you heard on the on the chapter in my textbook the old one it's the 14 and the 14 18 i'll show that one here in a minute could you see this one this is the strategy Strategies for vaccination, killed organisms, uh, natural infection agents that will pr provoke more of live attenuated organisms, they also provoke, and killed organisms that will also protective subunit of antigens. We can use the recombinant or a naked DNA or the epitope or specific or peptide and, uh, and then uh, uh, loss of mutants. And they uh, can also act as an adjuvant, okay, or the carrier. They, so we can use this as a killed organisms to protect against of any antigen or pathogen. So that's another strategy in the textbook. So now we will see about the um, uh, some of the attenuated, live, live or attenuated organisms. Live attenuated organisms. Please zoom out. I'll do that, I'll do that. Live attenuated. Okay, good. Example, the advantage of this live and attenuated organisms is the live, but it is not going to be uh, any pathogen, but this advantage and disadvantage. Okay, what is the advantage of this, of this live one? Replication of these organisms. These organisms inside in our body, it will replicate. Replication. Okay, of this organism in our system, 
and it, suppose if you give uh, maybe 100 virus, okay, so it will multiply into our cells and that will provoke 1,000 or bacteria or is going to be 10,000. So you are giving only small quantity, but in our system it will produce. So ultimately that will replicate and that will give yeah, larger dose of antigen, more antigen will be produced. And then the immune response, immune response is more. Isn't it? There's more of antibody inside of this infection. The example of the live attenuated organism which is in use now, vaccina virus. Vaccina or polio can provide the piggyback, piggyback, okay, are a carrier for genes. They, they can use for different type of gene for different type of disease, carrier for gene. Genes of interest or the antibody from other organisms. This is from other organisms. Other organisms. So the vaccina virus and the polio virus, okay, they have their own organisms here. So what will happen here, this is a this is the virus, okay, there's a DNA in that, okay? So you can you can incorporate another DNA from another one, another organism, DNA. So if you inject this, the advantage is replication of the organism, small dose, and then it will immune response and boost up, boost up, and then you get more of this antibody producing for this particular gene. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, yes, that's right. So this is like a piggyback, okay? We are using the vaccine and polio virus but add some other desired DNA molecule, other organism putting together and use as a live attenuated organism. And thereby we are getting a small quantity, but at the same time, what you get more of the immune response. How many of you have taken polio drops? Anyone? In a strategy, um, if uh, how many of the mothers here, mother or father, father, mother, okay. Have you ever taken polio at the time of you give birth to the, or you've taken care of as a man of the, of the neonate or the newborn? Did you take the newborn to the doctor to provide a polio drop? At the time, doctor won't give this polio drop to you? Injection? Yeah. You got? No. no. It's, a, it's a oral drop? It, you didn't take it? I mean, I, yes, it, the thing is in in UK, um, yeah, I got my second son born and then I went to the doctor and getting a polio drops on the day. The doctor said, are you going to take care of your son? I said, yes because myself, my wife there, and no one else to look after. So I have to shift my work from the night duty uh, to my research, and my wife is on the daytime, so I have to take care of the newborn, maybe after, you know, of, uh, 20, 30 days. So at the time, the doctors said the polio uh, drops, and they said, no, no, you have to take it, because the drop which you are giving to the baby, and that is coming through the feces, or the excretions. So you are going to change the diaper at the time, and then, uh, you know, in some case, if, you, if it involves in your handling of that is getting into you, and you will likely to get that polio. Because they are getting live, attenuated organisms they are giving. You understand that? So, always, so I, I got my in-law, mother-in-law to come in and then take care of that. I mean, my son, and then when, uh, then, Doctor said your mother-in-law also should give. She is more than 50, 60 years old. She also had the polio vaccine at the time. So whoever is taking care of the baby, they have to have. So that's one other thing. Uh, if anyone is working in, or in your family or any, anyone, so you please remember that if they are taking the polio and you are handling that, 
please you can take a one dose that is that is good of that one you know for for a while so that's what is live attenuated organisms that that's very good strategy okay now the next one the thought is the bcg yeah we will go there no problem okay the other vaccination is bcg okay and they are good vehicle for antigen this is for the good vehicle good vehicle for antigen that requiring cd4 t cells they require cd4 t cells for the immunity another one is the salmonella salmonella again have you heard of salmonella yeah salmonella they construct they also give oral and systemic immunity oral and systemic systemic immunity and uh, now they also have the intranasal so you can sniff it out intranasal so that's more popular they don't want to have any shot to the muscular intranasal and uh, they also have the risk of the live attenuated vaccine as i mentioned before in the polio there is a possibility of reversion reversion to the virulent form virulent form so you should be very careful in the live attenuated one and then it is also a danger for the weak person danger for weak uh, individual or the immune system in a compromised individual danger for weak immune system weak immune system okay then the next one is the subunits of vaccines we can we can think of the subunits of vaccines we can inject like a subunit of vaccines we can inject as a whole organisms which i mentioned before whole organisms i uh, inject pro it will provide up more of antigen okay and they are sometimes they are not protective not protective because the whole organisms you will give suppose this is a bacteria you have a different type of protein and and, and and maybe uh, a certain type of protein only of virulent so we need only this antibody to provoke more of anti antibody but you have a different antigen our immune system is more diluted and then it will produce a less amount of antibody when compared to this so this this one will have a less when compared to the whole lot when you inject the whole organism it is being diluted right instead if you get this this part of this antigen and then inject a part of the subunit then you will have more of antibody so that's the whole organism is not good and then to use of purified compound use of purified purified compound here the protein are the protein molecule and also we did study about the dna recombinant dna technology and uh, we can also inject the naked dna naked dna and this naked dna you can inject to the im intramuscular and that will provoke more of antibody so that is also a, a strategy and you know have you ever heard of the uh, foot and mouth disease foot and mouth disease for the cattle have you ever heard of that one that's a very big thing in a in a poultry as well as in the uh, you know the pig uh, on the sausage industry on the beef industry there are a lot of problem with the foot and mouth disease so they will they'll they destroy that animal as soon as it getting infected it's, uh, it's very dangerous and for those uh, for this animal uh, at veterinary science so they they have uh, now they got a, a vaccine this vaccines uh, uh, which is being um, produced by the first time in a european union with a uh, five or six countries and uh, that is being first time they've been studied and uh, constructions and 
and then injector. Now they are they are patenting and, and they are coming up now. This is the first time. So this work is 1998 um, uh, to 2000. My wife worked on these particular vaccines on that one. And she constructed herself. This is the first time she did in Paris. And she worked on Paris and she did and and now that is now it has been marketing is coming up now for the protection of the cattle, for the uh, for the uh, foot and mouth disease, that one. So uh, at the time even I didn't I didn't uh, expect that. I asked how can you inject a naked DNA to to study that? But they did. That's what the plasmid they constructed and they injected. They found out the more of uh, of the antibody. That's a good news on that one. So they they presented in Spain and and they appreciated this company is good and. They got a lot of things on revenue, but we don't have anything. Well, that's fine. But we did work on that. Well, I didn't work, but my wife, she did that work, part of this one, vaccines, the DNA vaccines on that part. Okay, now we will go on to the next part, is the, uh, is the different type of vaccines which we have, um, we have seen before. Okay, current vaccines which is available, we can also use like Epito. Epitope. You know what is epitopes? Which will bind with the paratope or the antibody, right? Also peptide. Peptides. They all act as a vaccine. In the current vaccines, I want to give the list you also know. Otherwise, just yes, I'm giving DTP. What is DTP? Diphtheria. You know about this? Diphtheria. What is that? Next one. Diphtheria. Tetanus. And pertussis. So all this, this is DP, DTP, MMR, very MMR, measles, yes, measles, mumps, measles, mumps, and rubella, rubella, okay, and then polio, yes, BCG, right, H influenza, that's for the flu, okay, and then hepatitis B, and hepatitis A, meningitis, and then yellow fever, yellow fever and typhoid, cholera, rabies, okay, and all on the development stage, on the development stage is malaria, malaria, I will write it here, malaria in the development stage. And then cholera also they are doing it now. And then systomasis. Yes, C H I S T O S M I A S I S Systosmiasis. So these are under development. Okay. Now the question is, do you have to inject all of them into different stages of your of your of your lifetime on the early stage so that you can boost our injection now the technology has been improved now they are looking for a polymer uh, like a polymer big polymer and this polymer will have biodegradable polymer you can put uh, different segments of all these together in one have a one shot once for all that's it you need not have any shot no more that time that is the future direction so with this i'm finishing this of the vaccination, and you have any questions so far? Um, Dr. Shoma, yes. Can you explain? They keep talking about the MMR that mercury based it. It might relate to the. Could you the measles, mumps, rubella? Uh -huh. What is that? They say um, it's uh, mercury based. Mercury, yes, uh -huh. yes. And they say it related. I mean, not related. It is somehow they think it relate to uh, autistic. The cause of uh, autism. Autism. Oh, 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 autism. Oh, okay, okay. I, I, I got your point. What do you mean? What do they mean by uh, mercury base? I mean, uh, the the reason is the mercury is the heavy metal number one. Okay, and you cannot the mercury is having a different type of toxic profile when you ingest in the system, especially in the kidney. Okay, if it affects in the kidney. It's been, um, it's, it's going to more of on the DNA level. It, it's, it's, it has some um, ionic 
valencies which will which will clumps together and it induces certain type of reactions and the mutations which can occur over there because in the toxico to toxicology aspect on the did we study about this yeah, in, but in a why, in a but in a mercury no, the mercury is having a different type of profile. There are, you know, mercury, uh, mercurous and mercury and, and different property that's on the ion strength and everything. So it has its own value of uh, effective. But it is a myth. It is not everything proved yet. It is not yet proved yet. They said, yes, mercury poison and is going on. So we have one project with uh, Porto Lavaca and everything. So we are not sure if we haven't proved anything yet. Okay. Okay. Now, do you have any question from Sugarland or, or in Synchro Ranch or in Victoria?